Page 281. Page 281. There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves in the light, in the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, in the light, in the light, in the It's good to be back in the Lord's house this evening. Like I said, we appreciate each and every one that's come out to be with us tonight. We just ask that you mind the spirit of the Lord, do that which God has bid you to do. So maybe somebody tonight's got a song on your heart, something you'd like to say or do for the Lord this evening. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Anybody else tonight, something on your heart? I'll tell you one thing, I'll never, ever send out a text that says we're going to work before we have to do <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It wasn't too bad. Chuck, Chip got most of it done, so we, we, we appreciate that. But do be much in prayer for, for Sister Elaine. She, uh, uh, Brother Buck texted us he wasn't going to make it, and he was there headed to uh, actually take, taking her to Boone. So uh, he said he'd come and let me know as soon as he found something out. But we'll have a special altar prayer here in just a moment for them. Continue to pray for all those uh, affected by the storm, uh, th those that's getting ready to be affected in Florida, and not only those, but those that family members that are here. I know they're worried to death as well for all the things that's going on. So you be much in prayer for them. But this is our Wednesday night Bible study. So before we do that, maybe somebody has a, and we always hook up with altar prayer, but before we do, maybe somebody has a special object of prayer on your heart. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're glad we had the opportunity to come up. We're glad we could do that for you. And if anybody else needs things, you let us know, and we'll do our very best to make sure that somebody gets you took care of. Anybody else tonight? Anybody need to uh, got a prayer request? If not, do be much in prayer for all those that's already on our prayer list. And at this time, everybody that can and will, we'll gather around the altar and we'll go to the Lord in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, to assemble ourselves before thee, thanking you for another day and another opportunity, God, just to gather out on this side of eternity. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and for your grace. I pray to your Heavenly Father that you just touch each and every one, God, that is in this storm path, God, and Lord, those that's already been affected by the last storm, and God, so many things still without, and I'm sure that it's going to be some time before everything is restored. I, but God, I know you're the restorer of all things. And I pray, dear God, that you just continue to use us uh, to be able to be a helping and a blessing unto those that are in distress and in need. I pray, dear Lord, for uh, those needs that we don't even know about, God. If it's, up to, if it's your will that we, that we help, uh, God, you'll make us aware that we as a church, God, will be able uh, uh, to provide some of those needs. I, mean, I pray to your Heavenly Father for all those that's on this prayer list. We pray for Ralph Mink, the Reason family, Andy Lowe, Ryan, Ross, and Francis Dow, Willis Lewis, Kevin Bernard, Brandon uh, Arnold, Michelle Cook, Kinsley Thomas, Edna Long, Doug Taylor, Helen Duggar, Cindy, Ashley, and Riley, uh, Jake Main, Jean Campbell, Daniel Furches, Paula Greer, Tammy Taylor, Nursing Home, uh, Jim Beebe, Earl and Mary Ann Gamble, Carol Tedder, Willa Gray Adams, Harold and Shirley Rash, Jody Dunn, Devonna Walters, Michaela Taylor, Betty Brown, uh, Mandy Crenette, Joe McCress, David Adams, Mark Roberts, Dennis and Hazel Lewis, uh, Clifton and Adam Worley, Emily Church, Grayson Ar Arney, uh, Maddie Arnold, Scott Freeman, Mason and uh, his mom, uh, Brenda Stout, Danny Taylor, uh, Dolores Anderson, Dick Jenkins, Matthew Adams, Haley Adams, Ebenezer Christian Home. Sandra Laws, Dave Saltz, Delmer Pope, Dorothy Keller, Jake Bowers, Frank Main, Lucas Perdue, Clyde Owens, William Williams, Rusty Wilson, uh, Jake Hodge, Claire Herb, Lisa Reese, Wallace Lewis, Bobby Joe Feldner, Frank and Betty Johnson, uh, Dayton Barlow, or Brownlow, uh, Gail McKinney, Brandon Greenwell, Brenda Lunsford, Andy Osborne, Cliff and Lord Tressler, da uh, Cindy Thompson, Ava Rayner, Mary Jane Lewis, G Gwen Lewis, Richie Moses, Gary Buchanan, Glenna Lewis, Ron Burnett, Stacy Jennings, Don Payne, uh, Ad uh, Aiden St uh, Sturgill, Danny Eller, Brenda Stout, uh, Michelle Caputo, Judy Campbell and sister, Danny Buchanan, Christina Mo uh, Bolton, Eddie's family, uh, Patty Osborne, Elaine Kirby, Lord, you know she's headed to the emergency room right now. God, I pray she'll just touch her in a mighty way, whatever, and, get, and, and be with Brother Buck. Lord, just comfort his heart. Lord, we pray for Aaron Steele, Randy Lewis, Luella Dunn, Angie Ward, Buffy Cornette, Clifton McCoy, Wendell Carraway, Ashley Wilson, our schools, Alyssa's dad, Mike Lipford, Ann Hancock, Eli Robinette, Margaret Eisenhower, Sanford and Jane Humphrey, Nancy Bunning, John Yates, Dean Hamm, Doug Blevins, G. Buchanan, Nathaniel Rice, Brianna Poor, Carolyn Porter, Tammy Thomas, Ellen Cross, uh, Teresa Riley, Debbie Adams, Jaden Kimball, Danny Eller, Dustin Rankins, Gil Arnold, Jennifer Lay, and all the other victims of the storm, uh, from the storm and all the other things that's going on, God. I pray most of all tonight, dear Lord, for a great awakening. I pray, dear Lord, for a revival to break out. Uh, God, whether it starts here, whether it starts somewhere else, uh, Lord, I pray for all the things that's going on, all the people that's working, God, God trying tirelessly, trying to help others in need. But, Lord, I pray tonight most of all that your word would be spread out all across this great nation and people would receive you. Lead God and direct you to this service tonight. We give you all the praise. Not our will be done, but thine. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. Amen. Make a mention real quick. Uh, we also do have uh, water out there in our storage building. If you or anyone else need bottled water, gallons of water, we have plenty out there in the building. If you need it for cooking, cleaning, whatever, uh, it is out there in the building. If let's let me or someone know, and we'll make sure that you're able to get in there and, and be able to take some of that with you. Uh, if you'll after after service, if you pull over there, we'll be glad to load you some up. We've got in, in the gallons, we've got boxes that are or boxes of six gallons uh, each, so we'll we'll be glad to load that up. Also, I've got one big container out there. We had a bunch of busts, so I've got one big container out there. It's all loose bottles. If you got some bags or boxes, we can put you some in bottled water in those things. Uh, went out of its way. Some of the manufacturers that we represent, they sent all kinds of stuff in, and we're thankful for that. And uh, matter of fact, our, our, our area right now has more 
has more water in it than it's probably ever had. In it. I mean, matter of fact, they've, there's some places like Charlotte and some other places that's having a, a shortage of water because it all got shipped out and all got shipped to places like us in Western North Carolina and other places. And I told Melissa, Melissa and you know, we wasn't going to turn anything away. And I told her, I said, well, what we'll do is that I know in a couple of weeks this ain't going to be over. This is not going to be done in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I said the stuff that people say they because I, I I called uh, I called Cl- I called Clifton yesterday and said asked you know if there's anywhere that really just needed some water and different things and he said as far as he knew everybody was stacked up he called a few around a few places and called me back and said they was uh, all took care of so I told Melissa I said we'll just move the tractor out and we'll put some water and stuff in storage out here and that way when a few weeks when people start running low and nobody's sending stuff like they are today we'll be able to do that we'll be able to help some I also told her that if it if for our folks I mean a lot of times we just forget that hey there's people in the church right now we're, we're all on a you know been on a boil notice and boiling water and all that stuff and if you need water for cooking we've got water out there for that that that'll help anybody out uh, that needs it, but we do appreciate what God's been doing, and that's what God called us to do, amen, I believe that's a lot of what Paul's been trying to instruct us, and Paul's been writing to us, and telling us that we are to be Christians, amen, that, that, that means to be Christ-like, that, that means to do what God would have us to do, I, I have, uh, uh, Brother Ross mentioned, you know, we had some boys go up and help clean out his building yesterday, now, he called me, and told me, he said, look, I don't want y'all to come up here, I don't want you, listen, brother, and I told him, I said, this, this is what we are, tra- we're training kids. We're, we're training boys to be men, amen? I, I think we've gotten away from being able to train our boys to actually work. I'd rather see them out there shoveling a little mud and pushing a little dirt and carrying a few limbs than I had sitting in front of a, a video game day in and day out and day in and day out, amen? I, I, I'm glad that they're, and they seem to be enjoying it, <laughs> you know? I mean, listen. That's, somebody asked me the other day, it was Saturday, we was over in trade, and somebody come by and they said, how in the world did you get a, a whole slew of boys like that? I said, I told them we was going for ice cream. I didn't tell them what we was doing before we got ice cream. No, no, we, we, Johnny, Johnny takes them and feeds them real good, and he gives them ice cream and all kind of stuff, and, but they seem to be enjoying that time together, and I'm glad for that, and uh, they seem to be enjoying out there trying to help others. And that's what it's about. It's, you know, we're trying to help somebody. We're trying to train young men, uh, but we're also trying to teach them that not only how to become a man, but becoming a man, you help others. Amen. Uh, one of these days, it might be us that needs that help. Uh, one of these days, it might be them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, amen. They're good boys. I mean, and they, 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 there's something else, and we appreciate that. We didn't have all of them last night. We just had a few of them, but uh, there's others that would have been there, but Johnny was too lazy to go get everybody. No, <laughs> we was running late anyway. So, But you be much in prayer for them, and hey, if uh, you have an and we appreciate Travis and, and Brother Johnny for stepping up, and uh, I'm, if you want to get involved in this, this is not going to stop. This It's not going to stop just because, even when the storm's over, I, I, be, it's be, I think it's a good thing that at least once a month we take a crew and we take them out and we do some things in our community. So you continue to pray about that and, and support them, amen. Let them know, uh, hey, that you're proud of them for what they're doing. And uh, it, it'll be a big encouragement unto them and it'll, it'll kind of get them fired up to want to keep going on. And maybe not only that, maybe get some others involved, amen. <laughs> get some others involved in it. But we're in Philippians chapter number three. Philippians chapter number three. And we're going to get over here. And I think we got down through the first two verses. We'll pick back up here. Verse number three in, the, in this chapter, Paul again is reminding them to stop mingling law and grace together. It's all about what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. And uh, we'll take it, pick up here in verse, thir- uh, verse number three. The Bible says, For we are the circumcision uh, which, I- which worship God in spirit uh, and rejoice in Christ Jesus uh, and have, have no confidence in the flesh. Uh, so I think right here is a great verse for us to remember uh, what it is that, that we are really supposed to be. Amen. Uh, Bi- Bible, Paul in the, first, in the last verse was talking about how that some had tried to bring circumcision, which was a practice of the Jews, uh, back in to the Christian walk and the Christian belief. Uh, 
Now, what Paul was trying to tell them there, now, in, in, in their defense, uh, what, what circumcision was for the Jews uh, was a separation. It was a, a cutting off of it. If you look up circumcision, and you, you, most of you know what that means, but, but it also has a couple other means. It means a separation and a cutting off. Uh, and, and that's what Christ was talking about. That's what Paul was talking about in this scripture here. Uh, that, that's what the Jews were done. They were set aside. They were separate. They were different. Uh, and Paul was talking about that practice is gone, but we now are the circumcision. We as Christians and children of God, we are to be cut off and to be separated. We are to be cut off from that old life, from that old past, those things that we used to do before we were saved. Amen? That ought to tell us something. If we still do the same things that we used to do, I would be checking up to see if I really gave it all to God. Amen? I'd really be checking up to see if I'm really serving Him or if I'm just serving flesh and done something to make myself feel better. Amen? But Paul said we are the circumcision. We are that which is different. We are that which is separated. We are that not not only that is that what is that what it means, but it also means now that it's not just the Jews that are God's people, but we are God's people. Amen. We are His people by circumcision, by the cutting away of, by the separation of, and we worship Him. We worship Him in spirit, and we worship Him in truth. Jesus told the woman. At the well down there, the only true worship and the only way you're going to truly worship God is in spirit and truth. And these things go together. And I want you to realize that. You will never worship God and serve flesh too. Amen? It just doesn't happen. Oh, you might have an outward expression. You might raise your hands and shout and put on a show, but you're not really worshiping God. Amen? To worship Him, the one that is holy uh, means that I need to be separated uh, from the things of the world. I need to be separated from sin. Uh, I need to con how can I get separated from sin? Uh, I can confess that unto the Lord uh, and ask for his forgiveness. Uh, I get those things out of my life uh, and then I can really worship God. Uh, I can worship him uh, in spirit. Amen. Uh, I can worship him in truth. Uh, if I'm worshiping him uh, with things in my life, uh, I'm not really truthfully worshiping him am I oh I just want the benefits amen I just want the benefits without any consequences that's the society and the world that we live in today amen people do not want consequences for their sin that's all that's a big part of the the the, the left-wing movement in abortion and all these loosening of the laws and the passing of laws to make things that were a, a sin to God uh, to make those things legal uh, because they don't want to pay a penalty uh, for sin, amen, uh, for the things that they do. But our actions have consequences. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're at, what, how you were brought up, uh, actions have consequences, amen. Uh, oh, you may get by with it for some time. Uh, you may get by with it for a while. Uh, but there's coming a day when we're all going to answer for those sins and those things that we've done. Uh, Listen, if I, if, 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 you know what happens uh, uh, if you uh, hit your finger with a hammer? I, I mean, I didn't hit my finger with a hammer. I know somebody else that did. That, that's got a mark just like mine. Uh, but I can tell you, I, I, I let a wrench slip. Uh, and I knew, I, I knew when I put the wrench on that, I, <laughs> I knew when it broke loose what was going to happen. I knew it before I'd done it. And you know what I did? I'd done it anyway. And you know what happened? Exactly what I knew was going to happen. I, I suffered a consequence because I'd done something that I knew I shouldn't be doing. Hey, and you know what? We do that so many times in our spiritual life as well. We do that so many times each and every day. And we have to pay, con and we wonder why we have to pay consequences. It's because we don't do what we're supposed to do. Hey, if you push something, something has to move right uh, that something gets moved uh, if you pull something uh, that something has to slide or move uh, hey, every action has a reaction uh, and that's what Paul was saying uh, uh, he told him we are cut off uh, and we're going to worship God in spirit and truth uh, if I really want to worship God the way that I should uh, I need to confess uh, I need to stay confessed uh, I need to keep seeing out uh, the Bible says that this is the whole duty of man uh, that we fear the 
the Lord and keep his commandments. Now listen, I know God, I, I, can't, I know I can't be perfect and I know I can't keep those commandments perfectly. That's why Jesus fulfilled those commandments and went to the cross for me. And that's why he did it for you. But it is up to me to continue. It's not that I, I can't keep them, but it's that I should keep them. Amen? That's my duty to serve the Lord. If I want to worship him and I want to serve him, then I've got to keep things out of my life. Those things that nobody else even knows about. Amen? Those things that are hid, those things that you think is hid. Achan thought he had his sin hid too. He buried it in the middle of his tent. But it cost him and his whole family their life. Uh, he said, "There's that we which worship God in the spirit, uh, and we rejoice in Christ. Amen. Uh, listen, our happiness are to be in him. Now, we can get excited. I was listening to a guy the other day, and he was talking about he, he, he just gets excited, and he raises his hands in church and different things. And he was talking to a lady one day and said, she just didn't worship that way. Uh, she didn't raise her hands, and she, she, that just wasn't in her. Uh, and she said, okay. Uh, and said this, that they had a softball team, uh, and, and said this lady was on the softball team, said she wasn't very good, said she, was, she, wasn't, she just wasn't very athletic, uh, what, but said all of a sudden one day uh, uh, they were playing softball, and she got a hit, uh, and somehow she made it to first base. First time ever, as far as she, he knew, she made the first base. Said she threw her hands up in the air and shouted. He said, well, it ain't a hand problem. It ain't a shouting problem. It's just to getting those things out of your life and being excited about who it is that you serve. Amen? He said, we rejoice in the Lord. Hey, that Jesus ought to be what brings us happiness. Christ ought to be what gets us excited. Amen? We can get excited about a lot of things in this world. Hey, well, if we want to get excited about Christ, then he's going to have to become important to us. And if he's going to become important to us, then that means we have to be willing to cut off some things and to do away with some things, those things that keeps us from really serving God. The Bible tells us this. Let us lay, Paul also said, let us lay aside every weight that does so easily beset us. In other words, the weight that keeps us from being able to serve God, let us lay that to the side. If I want to rejoice in God, if I want to, if I want to worship God in spirit and in truth, then I've got to lay aside some things. It may be some things that this old flesh really likes. It may be some things that this flesh enjoys. But if it's keeping me from serving God, and it's keeping me from worshiping God, and it's keeping me from being happy, then I would, I would lay that aside. Let me ask you this. Have you ever just really been excited in God? Have you ever just wanted to shout? Maybe you've been by yourself and you did shout. Well, let me ask you this. What keeps you from being that tonight? I'd find out what that was and I'd get it out of my life. I'd find out what keeps me from getting more excited or it happening more often and whatever it, whatever it took to get me excited in Christ I'd find out what that is and I'd want to duplicate that so I stayed happy in the Lord. Amen. He rejoiced in the Lord. He rejoiced in Christ Jesus. He said I had no confidence in the flesh. See all these things just flow right together. That, that circumcision, that cutting off, that separation, trusting in God, rejoicing in Christ, uh, and having no confidence in this. Listen, we better not have confidence in the flesh. We better not have confidence in what we can do. Amen? Uh, it's not of works, uh, lest any man should boast. That does not mean that you should not work. That does not mean that you do nothing. Amen? Uh, that does not mean that faith uh, doesn't have some legs. Uh, that doesn't mean that faith doesn't have some knees. Uh, that doesn't f mean that faith, uh, faith doesn't have some hands. Amen? The uh, Bible tells James said this. Uh, he said, show me your faith uh, without works. Works without faith, or faith without works is dead. In other words, you don't have much uh, to faith uh, if you're not willing uh, to work. And, uh, that's what Paul, that's what James was saying. Uh, that's what the Lord said. It's important that we realize uh, 
hey, that we'll get excited. It's not of the flesh. It's not, I'm not working my way to heaven. I'm working because of what Jesus did for me. Amen? I want to repay. I want to return. I want to pay it forward. I want to do what Christ would have us. No confidence in this flesh. This flesh will let you down. Amen? Look, about the time that you think you've got it all going on, something will let you down. Amen? Look, you, this old, and the older you get, the more you'll realize this. You can have a great day. You can have a great, I mean, you can feel like you did when you was in your 20s or 30s. But I promise you, the next two days, you're going to pay for it. Huh? Look, there's times, there's times in my mind when I feel as young as I could ever be. Amen? And I do things in this body that the next few days, absolute. I, we we got two rooms. Actually, we only got one room left now that has that has carpet in it. We had two rooms, and I put flooring down in one room. Melissa and I did it one, done about half of it one day together, and I didn't like it. <laughs> so I took it up and I started over, and I did it. I said, "Man, I'm gonna get this done today. I'm gonna get it done today." I got it done all right. But for about two days, my knees and my back about killed me. Look, there's things in this flesh, it'll let you down. But I'm glad that he never lets us down. Amen? I'm glad that I have no confidence in this flesh. If this flesh can't even barely make it through life, I know good and well it's not going to get me to heaven. Amen? I have confidence in what Christ did on the cross. What he did on Calvary for us. Verse number four said this though, but now Paul's getting ready to let you know exactly who he was and why and how he could speak to verse number three. Verse number three tells you that hey, you don't don't have no confidence in this flesh. Put it all in him. Paul's getting ready to tell you what he was in the flesh. Verse number four says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Paul saying, Look, you think you don't? You think you something? You, you, you think you 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 can get? You think you all right with it? You think you're a pretty big man? Uh, let me just tell you who I is, Amen. Uh, and what he came from. Now Paul's getting ready to just uh, lay it on you down, lay it down on him down through here, and let him know who he was. Uh, Paul had been a man of the law. Uh, Paul knew what the law was, Amen. Uh, don't ever think that Paul uh, was just somebody got converted on the road to Damascus. Paul was getting ready to tell you exactly who he was and what he was before he got saved. He wasn't just a common man. He wasn't just an unschooled man. He was a man of the law. He knew what the, what the law was. God had brought him. He had the confidence in the fact that he had been circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, he had had the confidence uh, because he had lived the law that, that Moses had given. Uh, he, he had uh, uh, brought a greater, and a matter of fact, uh, uh, he had lived that law every day. Uh, the law was not done away with uh, when Jesus went to the cross, uh, but it was fulfilled when he went to the cross. This is what he says in the book of Galatians. He said, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for it is for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, if we still had to keep the law, it'd be Christ's death in vain it would have died in vain. It would still be up to us, and the confidence would still be in my flesh, but it's in him. Jesus fulfilled the law with his crucifixion. Now, now listen, verse number five. Verse 5, he said, now Paul's talking about himself. Uh, he said, circumcised the eighth day uh, of the stock of Israel, uh, of the tribe of Benjamin, uh, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, uh, as touching the law, uh, a Pharisee. Uh, what Paul was telling him then was he was more than just a regular Jew. He wasn't just a regular Jew that, that out of the ordinary box, amen. Uh, he was a Jew of the Jews, amen. He was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. Uh, in other words, he had... He came from something, amen, a, a Pharisee, a, a, the righteous, amen, a, uh, the, the religious sect in that group in that day. A, that's where he came from. A, he had the best schooling, amen. A, and I'm not talking about just sitting up here to public school. I'm not talking about he didn't go to public school, amen. A, 
he, he, went, he went to private school, uh, and he went to a private Jewish school uh, where he learned the law. Uh, Paul's saying, look, if you want to trust in the law, uh, you want to trust in flesh, uh, I know about the flesh. Uh, I know about the law. Uh, I know what the works of the law says you have to do. And he goes on that. He said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee. What does that mean? That means he was of the righteous ones. Amen. Not just, not just common. Verse number six, six is this, uh, concerning zeal uh, and persecuting the church, uh, touching the righteousness of the law, uh, uh, righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Uh, Paul, it's, it's, it's wild that he uses this uh, this word zeal, the word zeal to a Jew I means that you was doing everything right. Amen. I mean, you just had a, a love and a passion for it. Now, we have to realize where Paul was on his conversion. Paul, Paul, Paul's going to get to it here in a minute, but Paul was a persecutor of the, Jew, uh, of the Christians. Uh, he, was, he was proud uh, of what he'd done. He had a zeal to serve God. Uh, he had a zeal to serve the, the law. Uh, he had a zeal to be the Jew of the Jews. And he was working hard at it. He thought he was doing God a favor, amen, uh, when he persecuted Christians. He thought that he was doing the right thing by we now, every Christian that he could find, by putting them in jail and even under death, he's saying those who were promoting Judaism uh, must have to change too. <laughs> uh, if they only realize the desire to be saved, uh, that's what they need to realize. Uh, hey, the desire to be saved and to be changed, uh, not from, not, uh, not from, uh, not to be a. Uh, of the works of your flesh, but because of what Jesus did on Calvary, that's exactly what Paul was calling him to do. He goes on in verse 7, he says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Listen, he's telling them there, he was a Jew of the Jews, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a, a Pharisee is touching the law. He was one of those that had a zeal for the Lord, a zeal for God to serve the Lord. But something got changed. Something took him from living the law to living by grace. He, I mean, he persecuted those. He went out and put those in prison, what he could, for living under grace, for denying what the law said that they should do. He went from living that to being able to preach the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. Ain't that something? That's a, that's a great change that took place. That's something that happened in Paul's life. Paul's name before that was Saul. Paul had a great change. Something that, I wonder in our lives, did we have something that changed? Now look, not everybody has, goes from being a, a drug addict or a drunk to, to being sober just because you got saved. Not everybody was that prior. The Bible tells us that we've all, we come from different walks and we come from different life uh, backgrounds and we have different lifestyles and uh, our different families and all these things, but something changes on the inside. Paul not only went from somebody, he went from somebody that persecuted the Christians to somebody uh, that tried uh, to win out uh, and tried to gain more. Amen. Uh, that we went from convicting them uh, uh, to convincing them. Amen. Uh, he tried to get them uh, to become Christians. Uh, he went out to seek those that were in the way, uh, and now he was of the way. Amen. Uh, ain't that something? Uh, it's great to know that when God moves in, uh, he does something different in our lives. Uh, then when it, it, then here's what I also say. You may be a child of God. You may have been saved for a long time. But you've never really accomplished a, a whole lot for the Lord. Uh, here's what I can tell you that why, why that happens a lot of times. Uh, it's hard to accomplish a lot of things uh, when, you're, when, you got, when you're weighted down. Amen? Uh, look, if, if you're going to run a race uh, and you're going to go out there and you won't expect to win that race, uh, listen, you're not going to try to go out there and put weights on your back, uh, weights on your ankles, uh, weights on your shoulders, uh, weights on your arms. Uh, hey, you're not going to do that. Listen, I don't want. Uh, listen, how many of us today uh, uh, want to go and put tie a couple cinder blocks around our ankles uh, and go out there and jump in the lake and try to swim across? 
It's not feasible, is it? Amen. Not very smart, is it? Hey, that's why we do in life a lot of times. We'll get anchored down and weighted down by the things of this world. And we'll let the, 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 the sins and the, the cares of this world get us weighted down. And we really want to try to serve God. God said, just give it to Him. God said, let us trust Him. Let us lay aside that weight. Let us get those things off of us. And then we can run the race. Then we can serve of God. Amen. Uh, then we can be what God wants us to be uh, if we'll get those things out uh, and then we'll be able to truly worship uh, and then we'll be able to really rejoice in God uh, when he is our number one thing and our number one priority is serving him. Uh, then we'll be able to rejoice. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Every Christian praying every heart searching. Just real quick. If you're going to play one verse of imitation tonight you know whether or not you need to Come and pray or not. You know whether or not you need something from God. This altar is open for anyone for any reason. I'm not asking questions tonight. I just want to give you an opportunity to come and pray. We serve a mighty big God. But we serve a God that is able. And we serve a God that can. If you're here tonight and you've got something on your heart, something you need to pray about, something you want to pray for, maybe you're looking for guidance, maybe you're looking for things uh, uh, that'll help you. Maybe you're looking for some direction. God just help you with it. Anybody else want to come before we pray? Brother Dennis, you pray for us.